So this morning, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, again, the Giveman story, and then really nuts and bolts. How does the site work? Um, and again, keep, it, keep your questions coming. And then we've got the activities. So to really think about how you're going to take this information back, um, jot down some notes very specifically about what you're going to put on your content, your pages on GiveMN. Um, and then talk a little bit about how do you spread the word? How does it work? What's different about online fundraising than other methods of fundraising? And really think about some specific outreach. Um, and demo and Q&A. So Q&A really throughout, please, as you have questions, just to shout them out. So really, our vision um, at GiveMen is to host a marketplace, the most dynamic giving marketplace in the country that's the destination for charitable giving in Minnesota. It's a little bit of a mouthful. But we had an event last November. So we launched November 1st of 2009. We had an event called Give to the Max Day on November 17th. How many folks received donations as part of Give to the Max Day last November? Go ahead, so some. OK. How many people heard of the event Give to the Max Day? Too late. Too late. OK. <laughs> I'm guessing that might be why you're here today. So I've got good news. There is another Give to the Max Day. There's yeah, November 16th. You've got it on your calendar already. Um, and there is, GiveMin is much more than a one-day event. And that's, um, it's a blessing and a curse to have such a wonderful um, event out of the gates. But we raised $14 million in 24 hours on that November 17th. And um, again, we had just launched. And this, put it, this basically put us at um, one of the biggest online giving portals in the country overnight. And I think, we hope, part of our early success is really about the legacy of giving in Minnesota and this technology. The whole goal of the technology is to be really easy to use and very engaging. Um, so the story behind GiveMen is that the um, Minnesota Community Foundation, so we are a 501c3 supporting organization of Minnesota Community Foundation. They're based in St. Paul. And their board was looking at sort of all of these ways that technology was changing how people um, find what they're passionate about, how people engage with causes and things they care about. Um, there are a couple really great sites. One's called kiva.org, and that's a, um, you can make a, it's a micro lending site. So you can make a $25 loan to a woman in a village in Guatemala. She buys a cow. You follow her story, or a goat, or you know whatever, and it changes literally sort of the economy of her village, of her family. I mean, it's, in, it's incredibly moving. And for us, $25 is not a huge sacrifice, for most of us, I should say. Um, and so that experience of connecting with someone so far and being able to influence their life and feeling gratified, feeling very good about that, that um, connection, was just one example of how technology is changing how people are thinking about giving and getting engaged. Um, another example is uh, Donors Choose. Has anybody seen Donors Choose? It's a great website. Again, it's very specific. It is um, classroom teachers put up projects and they say, if you'd like to fund my Cinco de Mayo uh, you know, unit, um, it's going to cost $258 and I need bulletin boards and workbooks and costumes or whatever. And as a donor, you can go in and you can um, give that $258, or you can give $48 to cover the notebooks. Um, and so again, it's that very sort of tangible connection that someone's feeling by having this experience, by finding this online. When you make a donation on Donors Choose, you get a handwritten note from every single student in that class. So you can imagine how that feels, right? To get your mailbox full of, of cute little notes. So really, technology was kind of turning philanthropy on its ear, right? Things have been done the same way um, for years and years and years. And now it was like, all of a sudden, there's sort of all these different opportunities for people to give. And we know in Minnesota that individual giving is a $4 billion um, market. People are giving $4 billion in the state annually. That comes from a stat from the Council on Foundations. Um, and we also know that the average nonprofit does probably less than 1% of their fundraising online. So just to think about kind of what the opportunities are, um, again, the Minnesota Community Foundation was saying, how do we take these awesome um, sort of trends in technology and leverage it for the better of the nonprofits in Minnesota? How do we attract and keep money in Minnesota? Um, while it's great that money can be going to Guatemala and to water projects in Africa and kind of all over the globe, there's a huge opportunity given our unique landscape of philanthropy to do something here. 
We also know that um, how donors are, what they want, and how they're engaging is changing fairly rapidly. Um, those are just some kind of basic stats. Again, they're in your notes. But online it, giving is growing enormously. I mean, when you think about the Haiti response, I mean, the Red Cross, they raised $40 million via text um, phones, so smartphones. That's crazy. And that compared to Katrina, I think that was like a, like literally a 4,000% increase or something. And it just means, um, I'm going to quote Jeff, uh, it just means that the infrastructure for technology is there. More people have a phone that they can text on. It doesn't mean more people care about disasters now than 10 years ago. More people have the way, the ability to do it, and it's easy enough to do that, they've, that they do it. Does that make sense? So um, we also know that, that donors are able to get information um, quickly. They want information. Um, they want sort of transparency. They want to see what your organization is doing and what your organization will do with their, your money, their money. Um, convenience, et cetera. So I think you had mentioned that, or someone had mentioned, um, you know, just think about how the internet has changed your life, um, the tasks that you do online. Yeah, say it. Shopping for cars, totally. Say more about that. Well, you just say you like a certain brand of car. You punch in that brand in a 200 mile radius and you get all your prices, your options, whatever. Right. So you know exactly what you have or what you're going to look at before you go into the dealership. Yeah. And it used to be 10 years ago, or I don't know, five years ago, you'd walk onto the lot and there's your choice, right? Those 10 used cars or whatever. Yeah, that's a great example. I hadn't thought about that example. Um, I know I buy my, my kids hot lunch online. I, you know, there's just like the, just your daily tasks, right, um, have become much more um, about getting information from the internet. Another example, um, I was, we were going to, we were just checking out a Holiday Inn for a water park for a fun outing. And you know, you go on the holidayinn.com and you look at it and you click through the pictures. And you're like, oh, that looks nice, that looks fun. And then you go to hotel.com because you want the real deal, like you want to see people's reviews that have slept, you know, stayed there and been there. And they say, nope, the carpet's gross. You know, the pool didn't work that day. And you get the real reviews. And in what a matter of 30 seconds, I can I can make my I can filter this information and make a decision about nope, you know what? I don't want to go there. So just how we make decisions, I think, has changed pretty drastically. Um, I, I uh, what was I going to say about that? So the point here is that if people aren't necessarily giving to your organizations online, they're probably trying to get information about you or trying to research your organizations online. How many people have set up what's called a Google Alert? You guys have Google Alerts? So this is a really easy thing to do. You want to go to Google. And um, what it does is it scans the internet for, you set, you set what you want to search for. So I search for GiveMN. I search for GiveMN.org. I search for my name, because you never quite know. And there's like 10 Dana Nelsons. Somebody's like a pharmacist in California that's very famous, so I get lots of stories about this Dana Nelson. Uh, but you probably want to look at your executive director, you know, kind of maybe your board chair. Um, and it basically just tells you where you're being mentioned on the internet. It's fascinating, because I guarantee you might think, I'm, we're not out there. I guarantee you, you are. And you just don't know where. Sometimes they're random, sometimes, you know, it's not, it's not super, super, super accurate, but it's a great place to start. So when we look at um, fundraising, sort of the, the, the cost to acquire a new donor, this next slide is about this. Um, and I quote, I think it's from AFP uh, Fundraising America. Who? Thank you, Aretha. I was like, AFP, it's escaping me. Um, the, it takes $1.25 to raise a dollar via direct mail. So for new donor acquisition. No, I mean, we know it takes money to, to raise money, right? I mean, that's, and the, it's a long-term, you know, commitment. So you're bringing somebody in and you're building a relationship and you're growing those gifts probably over time. So it, it's not a super fair comparison, but when you think of the ability to acquire new donors online, seven cents to the dollar. So, I mean, that's a pretty incredible range just based on that, right? So that coupled with um, you know, what we know about the trends about how people are getting information, 
I think is leading to a really big shift in how fundraising is being done. Doesn't mean this is happening today. Doesn't mean you've missed your chance or missed the boat. It's the beginning of a really big trend that um, I'm really glad you guys are here today because it means that you're interested and that you want to plan for your organizations to be relevant throughout this trend. Um, so the old fundraising model, which is still today, it's not old, it's current, right? Is basically you research who your potential donors are, you send out a, a mail piece, right? Probably a letter from your executive director, um, and then you receive a check donation. The new fundraising model is that donors are searching for you. Donors are searching for things that they care about. People are think, you know, searching for things that they care about. Whether it's because Pepsi Refresh is out there like crazy. Did you guys see the Twins won Pepsi Refresh? It was really cool. The Courage Center, they're building a, um, a baseball diamond for a wheelchair baseball team. And so that was a, just a big public competition that Pepsi's doing. Um, American Express has another big one. Um, Facebook causes, right? There's like all these ways um, that people are getting marketed to care about things. What do you care about to think about this, right? So they're being marketed to. So they're searching for things that they care about. They find your organization, they follow you, they research you, and then um, they tell others about you. So it's really much more of a peer-to-peer -peer, um, type of relationship. Hi, good morning, welcome. So before this like gets you totally freaked out and you know you're like, oh my god, we have to stop sending out letters and whatever. It it it, it it's the beginning of a trend. I can't stress that enough, right? Um, and really, the good news is that that is why GiveMin is here. Jeff and my job is literally to help you figure out how to do this. That is that is our core to our mission. So our goals are are literally to transform how donors and nonprofits are interacting in Minnesota, right? To leverage technology, to grow giving, and to reduce the overall cost of fundraising. Now this is a, you know, kind of a three to five to seven year reduction of cost, I think. Um, we were talking yesterday, there was a panel of folks who were doing on, on, online fundraising and how right now, the bad news is you kind of have to do it all, right? You can't just jump into email and online fundraising and abandon your annual, uh, you know, your hard copy, all your direct mail pieces, your newsletters. Right now, you kind of have to do it all. And it's hard to segment and it's hard to understand, like, what's my return on investment with email versus this letter versus, um, you know, our newsletter versus an event, right? Kind of all the ways that you're fundraising. Um, so it's uh, over the course of time, we'll, we'll start to learn and be able to reduce um, I think some of that hard copy communication. Growing giving, I do want to comment just briefly. So how do we do this? We do this through, through big giving promotions. So like the, the partnership with Bremer that we're doing at the end of September, um, and like Give to the Max Day, where we were able to get with a huge earned media campaign. And so I hope that's you know, how some of you heard about it and was like, oh darn, we didn't hear about it on time this year. But um, we engaged over 38,000 people to give in that 24 hour period. So our goal this year is to engage 40,000 folks. So I'm really glad you're here because you're gonna be in great shape for that event in November. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit Try to go pretty quickly, so just, you know, again, please flag me if I'm going too fast or you, or you're, you um, have a question at any point, okay? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to go fast because I want us to get to how you guys can use this. So I'm going to talk through literally how does the site work. Um, who is on the site? So you can see here, basically every single 501c3 is already listed on GiveMN. We partner with a company called Razoo, it's R-A-Z-O-O dot com. And, um, and they're the web developers. So basically, they run the website, um, and Jeff and I are really the local extension. GiveMin is the Minnesota kind of version of, of Razoo, if that makes sense. Um, who is on the site? Everybody's on the site. What this looks like, what this screen is, if you guys can see it, is it looks kind of like an exploding globe. That's the, um, that's the Razoo logo. And basically, that's, that's what it looks like when you have not updated the content on your page. So um, if you go and search for your organization on GiveMin right now, and it looks like that, um, we have a little work to do. Not bad, you can receive donations in this state, basically. Um, but ideally, what we want you to have is a really gorgeous picture.